So here's the deal. Earlier today, I woke up and I played a game of Blitz. After I made that game of Blitz, I thought it would be an interesting opening to make a YouTube video about. So I made a video and I called it Three Secret Rare Lines to Beat the London System. So here's what happened. I sat down to play a game of Blitz and my opponent played the London and I was just making stuff up and I played the move Pawn to H6 here and there were no games in the database. I thought I had discovered this really amazing opening and I was just kind of faking my way through it and I decided to make a video. The video was great. I showed three very rare ways of playing against the London. The only problem was apparently this is already an entire system. So as soon as I posted the video, I went over and I started to read my YouTube comments and I had people telling me things like, Jonathan says there's absolutely no theory after c6, d6, h6, g5, but actually there's a whole book about this opening. It's in Russian, it's called Elshad's Opening, and it's a popular joke on the Russian chess YouTube. So this was obviously quite unexpected, so I had to take a deeper look. So then I went over to Amazon, and there it was! There's a whole book written about this entire system. It's called the Elshad System. It's written by Igor Nemtsev, and apparently he even made a second book the Elshad for white. So apparently this thing is incredibly universal. You can play it as either color and uh, it gets pretty good reviews as I remember. You know, five stars. Yeah, maybe it's not so bad. So apparently I've just invented a secret troll opening and I had absolutely no idea, but I was fascinated. So I took a look at some of the lines and I want to share a few of them with you guys now. So uh, what is this Elshad system? Well, apparently you can do it as either color. I think there's some interesting stuff that uh, I want to look at here as white. <laughs> Just to show you how fun this opening can be. It's not really a serious weapon, but it actually is more dangerous than a lot of other jokey openings that you might come up with. So the main idea of the system is you're going to play a move like pawn to c3. And after no matter what black does, what I discovered from my incredible two minutes of research here is that no matter what opening black decides to play with. I think these are all the three natural ones. White can actually play in a very similar spirit. So let's just start in order. Let's go d5, e5, knight f6. In this opening, the basic backbone of the Elshad is apparently to play the moves pawn to d3, h3, g4. The bishop will go to g2. You know, this knight will go here and eventually you can play in the center. Not so horrible. That seems like a reasonable setup. But apparently there also exists this very interesting approach. This is obviously meant mostly as a joke, but it actually could be a little bit interesting if you play the move queen to a4, which you can play against literally anything I think that black would play, <laughs> um, at least if they're playing in the center, playing normal. If they play d5, or they play e5, or they play knight f6, you could play queen to a4. <laughs> and right here, this move actually is check and it gets us completely out of theory. I think what is going to actually be useful is let's see what they do here on Lee Chess, and let's see if the uh, the players on Lee Chess have found a good way, a good antidote against the Elshad. Uh, I actually have no idea what this is. Uh, we can look at this. I assume black is only a little bit better. I assume. Okay, yeah, black is, uh, is reasonably better. I think the two main options here would be c6, bishop d7 seems to make a lot of sense, blocking with the knight also makes a lot of sense. But uh, essentially, no matter what you do, white's next main move is g4. And this does kind of keep in line with the basic structure that white is aiming for, but uh, I think we'll, we'll spoil all the fun, I think, if we keep the engine on for a little bit too long. But something like e5, h3 is possible. And uh, if black just plays sort of in the middle, uh, you get some opening like this. This is kind of what you're playing for. This seems like very reasonable play by both sides. Uh, I haven't actually fact-checked any of this, but yeah, I mean, white's probably a little bit worse, but maybe you can get away with this against uh, a certain group of opponents. But anyways, so that's a pretty fascinating line. If we go back to this position and we insert this check one more time, there, there was a little bit of fun that could be had here. If you play here, it's like queen to b3, and then obviously you would you would expect maybe somebody would want to go here so potentially they could go here which is probably a big mistake that really isn't the right square for a bishop but maybe in some opening like this maybe if you're a computer you just say whatever to the b pawn and if white actually grabs it uh you can play like this even this though it's not so obvious i mean i, I mean it's black has to have some compensation here black it says the computer says it's quite better it's not super obvious but uh, i mean maybe white should start getting out some of the pieces but maybe you can troll like this. If you're, if you're trolling and you're only minus 0.3, that's pretty good trolling. 
So, I don't know, this could actually be slightly, slightly dangerous. If instead the opponent plays pawn to e5, yet again you can play queen to a4 uh, <laughs> with a big idea. If ever here, I mean, no matter what, we're just going to be playing g4. So let's assume most people play here. G4 anyway. And yeah, so something like this actually will be very, very similar. There were some interesting lines. Let me see if I can recreate some of the stuff. Maybe the most interesting lines are actually in the knight f6 variations. Because here, after queen to g4, let's pretend they play pawn to g6. Yet again, you can, uh, you can play g4 here, and things could get a little bit crazy pretty quickly. For example, if they just go here, uh, one thing is you can continue, or you can just, for a second, develop. Let's say they castle. You can now play g5, and, uh, you know, something like this, it could get kind of dangerous. Like, especially if they go back to e8, this might end up getting a little bit dangerous. You know, you're going to play h4, I guess knight h5, which is not the most popular move, uh, is, uh, is, is a playable option here. I don't know. There could just be some weird stuff. Okay, so I've been messing around with this opening now for a few minutes, and I think I actually just found a really funny line that I want to share with you guys. So in the e5 line, if you now play queen to a4, and black sets up both of his knights on the sort of the normal squares, like let's say knight to f6, g4, he just ignores all of our aggression, plays knight to c6, not worried about g5 or anything like that, white actually has another very trollish move, the move pawn to b4, and if you're going to try to embarrass a guy, this might be the way to do it. And black here actually is better, but it's absolutely crazy what you would need to find. And this is already asking some pretty tough questions, like, can you actually grab this pawn? And the answer might be yes, but it's not easy to demonstrate why, so I wanted to share this one cute line with you guys. So after knight takes g4, you can play pawn to b5, and now suddenly black has two pieces attacked, so it looks a bit grim. But what about queen to h4 with pressure on f2 and suddenly things are looking really scary for white. But what if white just simply ignores everything and plays knight to f3 attacking the queen? This is obviously now the greatest threat in the position, so the queen should take on f2 forcing the king to move. Now black here actually has exactly one move to save this position and it's, uh, it's crazy, you can try to find it for yourself. But the only thing that black has to save this position, notice again you got two knights hanging is this desperado knight to b4 is the idea and if you take right away which you actually probably shouldn't do black is doing really well after a move like pawn to e4 <laughs> just uh, causing all sorts of chaos it's absolutely insane so what white really should do is just play bishop to h3 attacking this knight again leaving that guy hanging whatever preparing rook to f1 but black also can just ignore everything and play pawn to e4 like nothing's happening. And then after rook to f1, uh, how does it, it gets even crazier here. Because now black can just take on f3 like it's eh, no big deal. After this capture, black's going to go here, black's going to win back more material, and black will be slightly better. Yeah, no, this line is crazy. There's a lot of really fun interesting uh, lines in this opening. So there actually might be a ton more to explore in this opening. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll test this out a little bit. Maybe I'll play it for myself and see exactly what uh, what happens. I don't know how deep we're gonna go into the theory on this video, but I just thought this was actually a very, very interesting system. And uh, yeah, it turns out if you want to have a little bit of fun, maybe you want to get a little adventurous, maybe you can play bond to c3, queen to a4, followed up with g4, and you always kind of fall back on some sort of basic system. Uh, that you can just kind of do every single time, play for some sort of random attack, and knock yourself out. If you want to have some fun, feel free to explore this one. And if you want some more entertaining videos on rare chess openings, maybe you want to check out my channel, and maybe you want to subscribe. Come on, do it! And I'll see you guys for another video.